Hello and welcome to another episode of Boundless Body Radio. I'm your host, Casey Ruff, and today we are releasing another bonus episode. This one's going to be rather short. This is an excerpt from a conversation that I had with former professional BMX writer Josh Perry. Josh Perry has gone through quite the ordeal in his life with brain tumors, and you know, he has found a way to kind of sort out his health. And we got on track talking about brain tumors and another cyclist, obviously, who dealt with brain tumors, and that's Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong is somebody that has really influenced both of our lives for the positive, despite everything that happened and everything that went down. My mother um, suffered from breast cancer for seven and a half years, and she passed away in 2006, way before she found out anything about all the doping scandals and everything that went down in Lance's history. And it was something that was really inspiring for her her and something that really inspired Josh. And to this day, we definitely consider Lance Armstrong one of our heroes. So I hope you enjoy this conversation. Like I said, it's rather short and be on the lookout for the episode with former professional BMX rider Josh Perry coming out in a few weeks. And without further ado, here's that conversation. March uh, 2010 training, trying a new trick for the first time on a real ramp outside of the foam pit to make sure I work out the kinks for the same contest coming up in April of 2010. And that trick went wrong, resulted in concussion and an MRI. Now, the interesting thing about this MRI was throughout the course of the year prior, I've been going in complaining of headaches, migraines, vision loss, vomiting. Uh, nausea, all these things, and asking for a scan of my brain, x-ray, CAT scan, MRI, something. I didn't know at the time. I know now the difference between all of them and what they're important for and what they can and can't see. But I was like, hey, there's something wrong with me. And they kept judging me by my cover. They kept saying, you're young, you're in shape, you're healthy, blood work doesn't show anything, you just have headaches, here's some pain pills, come back if you need more. Lo and behold, I didn't have a pain pill deficiency because fast forwarding to March 2010, when I hit my head, had to get an MRI now, they found a massive brain tumor. They didn't find any swelling um, besides where the tumor location was with pressure uh, or bleeding like a TBI. They found a brain tumor. And that's, that's what started my journey into auditing really every aspect of my being and how I could optimize it to be better on my bike, which... Um, really helped me, um, you know, hone in on nutrition, exercise, mindset, and apply that. And I came back stronger than ever. But yeah, it was it was that crash that led to the MRI that saved my life. And something I love sharing is like, damn, man, like if I didn't fall in my head, I'd be dead today. Wow, that's so crazy. What a cool opportunity, um, you know, taking a challenge like that and, and, you know, learning from it, being better from it. Did you ever feel like you hit like a rock bottom where you were feeling like hopeless? Yeah. So from diagnosis, the surgery was about a week, week and a half. I forget exactly. I'd have to go back and look at the paperwork, but, um, it, and actually it may, the MR, the diagnosis may have been into April because April 16th was my surgery. Um, so I forget the, you know, the time frame of like hitting my head, maybe at the end of March, um, and then not getting the diagnosis to early April, whatever it was. But, um, yeah, the first couple of days, like instantly when they, the way they would describe, it was described to me was one, I was by myself because I was living in North Carolina by myself with my friends. And two, I thought I was just going in to be told, yeah, stay off your bike another week or two from typical protocol of concussions. And so the way it was described to me was when the doctor came in, he said that there was something abnormal with the scan. And I was like, damn, like, I know, like I fall asleep in MRI machine. I can fall asleep really easily. And I twitch when I'm falling asleep. So I was like, oh, did I move? Cause I know if you move, the images don't come out clearly and you have to redo them. And he said, no, like the images came out clear, but there's something in your brain that shouldn't be there. And I remember laughing out loud being like, well, what do you mean? I can't put anything in my brain. So what, what are you saying? And then he went on to say, well, this time we don't know if it's benign or cancerous, but we do know that the mass that's in your brain needs to be taken out if you want a shot at living. And by the way, you'll probably never be able to ride your bike again, or at least at the level what you do today. Wow. And all I heard was cancer, never going to ride your bike again, you may die. And that's what I took on as my belief in that situation was, you know, I'm, I'm going to die. And so throughout the week, week and a half, I started to understand uh, other people have overcome challenges and my mom to this day is alive, healthy and well, but for 10 plus years, she battled colon cancer. She hit it for me for quite a bit, uh, at least the severity of it for my comprehension as a 17 year old leaving to pursue my dream. Cause that was her dream to see me 
pursuing mine and being, you know, happy. Um, but I remember, you know, I'm a part of my mom and she overcame this. I had that same courage and strength that she installed in me. And then learning about Lance Armstrong's story at the time, which I just went and rewatched his 30 for 30 yesterday. So and good. 2010 was around the time where a lot of his um, doping lies were coming out. And then, um, or I think he retired in 2010. And then 2012, which is relevant to the second diagnosis I went through, was when he came out and talked about it, or something like that. But the timeline was super transparent as far as like what path I was on in terms of like negativity. But regardless, he was a model of success to me. He was an inspiration as far as here's someone that looks a little like me from this country doing something that I'm doing on a bike, a little different objective, but went through brain, lung, and testicular cancer and came back. Regardless of how people think he went about it and if it was justified because everyone else was cheating with doping and this and that or not, to get back to the level of competition he did with or without performance enhancing drugs was phenomenal. The reason I can say that confidently today is because one, I went through a brain surgery and two, I didn't have chemo. He had chemo and I know what that does to someone's body. And the fact that he overcame all that and then came back to the level which he did and happened to win multiple times, which, you know, that's up for debate depending on the context of the person. None of that mattered to me. What mattered to me was here's someone doing something similar that I'm doing that is facing a circumstance that I, or face the circumstance that I'm facing now. In my mind, it was three times as worse, not even to mention at the time, I didn't know if what I had was cancer or benign, which we found out later was benign, but that person overcame it and they got back to doing what they loved. So there was a shift in my focus. And so rather than focusing on what if I don't wake up one day, I started to focus on, well, that person did it what do I want? I started focusing on what I wanted and what I was going to do when I got out of surgery. And that was going to be the best version of myself. I was going to do everything I could to continue living my dream and progress. And that's what I did. Mm. Wow. I mean, you and I share that. He will always be a special athlete to me. Um, when, when the live strong stuff was kind of, um, kind of getting big. My mom was given about three months to live. She'd already battled cancer for about four to five years. And I was out of the country. I was in Brazil for two years. And, you know, she started, I was a cyclist. So she started watching the tour and becoming a little bit more interested. And I still have the handwritten note that she sent me in Brazil with my very first Live Strong band that, that talked about how inspiring it was to her that he was doing this. And she died in 2006, way before any of the doping information came out. And so for me, I agree with you a hundred percent. He will always be somebody very special in my life. And I have live strong tattooed on my arm. And I think he did such an amazing job inspiring people like yourself, like my mom, like how many hundreds and thousands and millions of people out there that they can overcome these crazy challenges. So I love that. And I agree with you 100%. Um, so you, you ended up going back to competition. Is that correct? Yeah, I was, uh, after surgery, I was riding five weeks later and, um, yeah, and also I want to say, you know, I'm sorry about your mom. And that's something that the, the woman that was in the 30 for 30, who was someone who was also inspired by Lance's story was alive. And because of Lance's work and live strong was work, you know, her battling cancer and chemo, she was able to preserve her eggs before she went through chemo treatment. And now she has four kids. So wow. that's, that's what, when people are like, Oh no, he cheated. Like, how could you like someone like that? Like, I'll never forgive him. He like, they hate on him. It's like, man, like he was 20, 21, like, and after listening to many of his interviews and reading his books, like to have no one in your life really telling, you no, to have a whole economy built around your name that you're employing people. And then you have all this money and power and to have that ego boosted to that level. And then you have a foundation riding on, on that saving lives, transforming lives, you know, raising tons of money. Like the whole Nike story around, they, they made what 5 million of those yellow wristbands sold them for a dollar and gave all that, like that's $5 million that wasn't there. But then that woman's story of him sharing something. And this is part of probably why I share so openly, but how he was preserving his sperm because, you know, he had to obviously have one testicle removed and then chemo. One of the side effects that back then, what she was sharing was, it's not talked about. It wasn't talked about back then that the risk could be for infertility. So by reading his article 
and her doctors not saying anything about it, she took the initiative to preserve her eggs and has four children today. So that's when people, you know, try to share uh, or they, they don't try, they express negativity towards him. I'm like, I get it. I get it. I could, I could try to understand where you're coming from, but at the same time, what your mom found in him, what I found in him, what many others found in what he represented and what he did is not to be dismissed by his choices that he learned from and he lost everything. And that's what they talk about in the 30 for 30. Like, and then what his kids had to go through, which he was, a he created that. Like it's enough of what he went through and then what came from all the hate and then what his children had to go through that when people say things like that, I'm always intrigued by their perspective. And then I usually ask, well, how much do you know about the situation? And typically it's, oh, he lied for years. He actually cheated. And then that's it. He's a bad person. It's like, man, there's so much more. Um, So I just want to take some time to appreciate the fact that your mom and I shared that, that we found some type of inspiration and hope to continue focusing on the fact that we may be okay. Uh, we will have a better quality of life just because of that belief in that moment. Um, and that so many other lives have been transformed, but ultimately that's what inspired me to do the work I do today. It just took two more diagnoses to wake up to the purpose that I was being led towards and which ultimately stopped me riding my bike. So, um, yeah, I forget what you were just asking about, but I wanted to acknowledge, you know, that part about your mom and just the whole uh, correlation with Lance and people finding inspiration or finding hate with what happened with him and his uh, his reality ultimately. Yeah, I mean, talk about gray matters. That <laughs> it's about as gray as it gets. Like, there's it's it's a hero story. It's a villain story. It's everything all wrapped up, and and everybody will get something different out of it. So, I, I really appreciate you saying that, and I I agree with you 100. percent He'll always be a hero to me for sure. So thanks again for listening to this bonus short episode with former BMX professional Josh Perry. Be on the lookout for that episode. It's a very inspirational one. He's such a dynamic guy, and we were so lucky to have a conversation with him. So look out for that in the next few weeks. And this has been another episode of Boundless Body Radio. 